Thank you so much for coming. My name is Marty Bowser with Go On for this week, and this is Features Female Seattle Edition. Thank y'all. Um, Features Female is actually the brainchild of my partner, Tavia um, MD. It started last year in uh, LA during the BT Awards, where we had a group of women come in and speak about their expertise in their respective fields. And since then, we've been to Atlanta for ABC, um, New York for our holiday edition, now we're in Charlotte where I reside, and um, going to continue to grow here. So as you can see, our goal is to have a group of well-rounded women with their respective fields be entrepreneurship, executives, entertainment, whatever have you, and you know, give advice and anecdotes along the way to the journey. So without further ado, I would like to welcome you all to meet Ms. Tavia. She will be our moderator this evening. Welcome to the <laughs> Can I have a just to move out a bit? They kind of like really bunched out. I think they have a nice move out. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, first, I want to thank WeWork, who partnered with myself and the Futuristic Playlist to host this beautiful venue. And I want to have Raven come up with anything before we start, just to tell you a lot more about the space. Raven. Hey everyone, um, welcome for welcome and thank you for coming out this week. Um, this evening, my name is Raven Mosley and I'm a community lead here. Um, if this is your first time in a WeWork space, thank you for coming. Um, so WeWork does three things. We provide incredible office spaces for companies of all sizes. We provide professional services. And we also um, provide what you're experiencing right now is a sense of community. So if anyone wants to take a look around um, at the conclusion of this event, just come find me and I'll be here too. Thank you. Thank you so much, Raven. And again, this is a very beautiful place. I've never been to Charlotte. This is my first go, so this is definitely a great welcome. I'm going to um, just pass the mic around and let the host kind of introduce themselves and what they're interests are the social media handles, of course, because I'm sure everybody wants to follow. <laughs> and I'm going to start with Dr. Pamela Good evening. My name is Dr. Pamela Gurley. I am an author, a speaker, a CEO over two companies, and I still kind of work for the federal government. Don't know how much longer I'll be doing that, considering all the other avenues that I have going on, but I'm a woman of purpose, and as long as I'm living in that, I'm just going to follow to follow whatever's going to come from that. I am currently on a promo tour for my new book, I Am Not a Stereotype, I Am Her, and lots of other brandings, and I'm uh, speaking on Intentional 2020 because we have to be more intentional about what we are, you know, how we're living our lives and where we're putting ourselves. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that much. Um, I'm Chaz, um, the hair group on all social platforms. I am a serial entrepreneur. When I say that, I mean I do everything. They are probably do it, except for cutting his hair. But um, I just came out with a cookbook. I have tons of e-books. I have three children. Um, I'm a retired hairstylist. And uh, I'm just into digital products right now, so that's what I'll be talking about. Moving on to the next level. Hello, my name is Megan Wolford, and my social are well, they are men on Instagram and Twitter. Um, I'm currently an executive assistant at Million Dollar Baby Entertainment. I also have my own artist um, consulting and development and management company, which is Touchdown Music Group. Um, I'm a graduate of New York University. I have my master's in music business. And I've just um, been grinding out for like eight years in the music industry um, between Charlotte and New York. Um, so I'm just here to talk about um, diversity and inclusion and what my experience and the best practices on how to work in a non-music city or some some charity. <laughs> Good afternoon, my name is Red. I go by Nails by Red on Instagram. I am a celebrity nail tech. Um, I have 10 years in the beauty industry. Um, I've done from Carolina Pan for Chillers up to Carnegie maybe three years ago in so LA. So here to share my philanthropy and entrepreneurial experience. Thank you. 
so much. This is an ATS teacher in Christ. And if you didn't hear, I am Tavia Navdeenville. I can follow on Tavia and D on all platforms. And the future is female basically created as a reach back for women like you who may not have a budget, may not have a support or an anchor, this is for you. All right, so talk to being the one. <laughs> being the fact that you have your feet in so many different things, how did you start promoting yourself when you really didn't have a budget? <clears throat> so when we, think, when we think of budget, we think of all of this money. You fail to realize that budget can mean that three or four dollar coffee that you're getting every day that you can reinvest in something. So when it came to, I'm not a fan of social media, but I realized I need it. And one of the areas when you don't have money and you're first starting out, what I will say is you can actually do social media marketing for the same price that you're spending on this coffee. And so if you, instead of buying coffee three days out the week at $5, you can take that same $15 and do a promo that will not only go from Instagram, it'll also promo on Facebook as well. That would give you even a small reach that you didn't have before. So I did something as simple as that when I didn't have a budget because I knew the value of needing to promote myself in some way, shape, or form. Outside of that, I'm like you. I became a serial preneur doing everything on my own, from writing my own content, doing my own promos. Um, so I self-published, and that still cost a lot of money, but I didn't have to pay a lot of outsiders. It made me cut back on shopping, <laughs> which I love. It made me cut back on going out to eat, and it also made me cut back on doing little things like buying my Starbucks every day, which I used to make an excuse for because I would put it on my car and then say, oh, it's already on my car, so it's not really spending money, but it really is. And so I reinvested a lot of the little smaller things to help me create and get to a place where I can afford a lot of the bigger things. Charles, I am already in the viewers. I actually watched your skin tutorial. So I have to ask you to say, your skin tutorial? Girl, I can buy my products. <laughs> so I have to ask you the same thing. Do you connect better um, with your videos versus just your posting? Or like, how do you move your products? Because you have a lot of products. Well, first, I had to turn my followers into my followers. Yes. So once I did that, and how you do that is you just have to get somebody to believe in your product. And if you believe in your product and you keep talking about it, they're going to believe in it. And once you get one person to believe in it, they're going to get two people to believe in it, and then three people, and then five. So it just multiplies. So honestly, 75% of my followers are buying followers. They literally buy everything. If I sell a pen tomorrow, they're going to buy it just because they believe in it. So, um, the question was, how do I, how do I market? How do I market? Okay, here's the thing. Video, then you like to see things, so if you're doing a tutorial or something like that, as far as like, like I was doing a skincare thing, people just want to know how to do things. Versus if I post a picture, they like pictures, but they don't like pictures with my, my family or something. So they have to totally relate to what I'm doing. And when I explain it to them or when I'm doing it and I show them real results, then that engages them more and it just multiplies. And if you're on Instagram, when you post a video, do it in your IG story. You get way more views in a matter of an hour. Whereas if I post it on just regular video, I'll get maybe like, let's just let's put it about to like 10,000 in 24 hours, and you'll get 5,000 in an hour if you do an IG story. Because it's literally just keep going like this. People can see it with the eyes they all with this. Well, since we're on skin, I have to take a couple minutes to bring up Allison from Urban Skin RX. She's basically her company donated some products to us today in the back, leaving the group. And they work Carolina based. So they are our hometown company. And I actually use some of their products too. Their sponges and the um, combination skin soap makes my life go up. <laughs> All right, Ray, I'd love to hear from you as well. Being a male tech, do you rely mostly on social media to promote? Well, I like to build a relationship with clients. So 
word of mouth has brought me a lot of success. Um, people like to feel, you know, like they can reach out and touch you. So um, getting more personable has brought me a lot of success. And um, word of mouth, when people like what you're doing, they're going to support you. They're going to tell a friend. They're gonna, you know, they're going to come back and they're going to bring two other friends. So um, just all my thoughts, which I was just saying earlier, word of mouth and people believe in your brand and believe in what you're doing. So word of mouth is really no funny. Um, I would say that most of my um, things are just conversational because I do consulting and I do management. So I had to brand myself as like a liaison. So with me, it's good for me to like use the tools on Instagram, like do the quizzes or ask questions to get a conversation started around music. And I've also been on like Twitter since it was kind of early and I've always discussed music. So now, Anytime somebody thinks of me, they automatically think about music. So for me, um, it wasn't necessarily selling the product, not was kind of the product, um, but it was just building that brand around what the uh, field that I'm in is offering. So most people, when, as soon as they hear my name, they know it's something to do with music. Mm -hmm. Well, while we have the mic, I have to ask you, since you do kind of like different artificial music, how much do you actually accomplish on your own, and how much do you outsource? Um, I would say it's mostly just me now, um, because it's like my network is where I outsource to. So um, I'm always working with vendors and different companies, so I can I can do most of my job from my phone, whether that's my nine to five job or management consulting. Um, so for the most part, it's it's my network and just my education network. What is your tool of choice, like um, in comparison to? Okay, since you're doing everything yourself, do you um, do more on Facebook? Because you have a lot of Facebook groups, or are you on Instagram? A lot of chats. Um, it's more on Instagram. Most of the uh, business funnels are through Instagram, and I meet with them in person. So I don't do. I'm, I'm just now starting my company. Um, most of my consultations have been in person. So yeah. congratulations, Tina. Chaz, what about you? Do you do everything solo, or do you have a team? Are you doing solo because you sell different products and everything like that as far as that, or do you do you love to? Oh, I don't know. It's just me and my guy. Only team I ever had was when I owned hair salon. That was it. And me, I feel like um, if somebody doesn't know what I do, it's not going to Because it's so hard finding people that's going to really support your business and run your business and how you're going to do it. And if you can't, then we're not going to click. Because I go hard all day. Like, Instagram is a job. Like, I want it all day. Because they make some money all day. Like, it's all day long. And I feel like if I get it, if I don't be on it, I miss my hundred dollars and I'm going to quit. Like, no. You know, so it's a job. So, I don't have a team. It's just us. Some things, because I'm not an expert, I hate IT, certain IT things. And so, for certain things like, uh, I would outsource when I was on my book. There are different formats for different platforms. And I don't know if, if you self-publish, you'll realize that Amazon has a different format from iBook. iBook has a different format from uh, Barnes & Noble Nook. So instead of me having to do that myself and trying to learn it, I outsource those type of things. I write a lot of content for other companies. So it's hard for me to, to sit back and write my own. So oddly, I have other people write my content while I'm writing other people's content. Because for me, it's, I can go back and clean that up a little bit more and I'm not losing that much money because then I can always go back and rewrite if I need to. But for my clients of companies that I write for regularly, they're used to my content. And so I'm not, I've not gotten to the place where I'm on social media. I'm still learning the whole social media now. And so I'm looking and deciding if I really want to pay somebody to manage that, because I'm a stickler about my image. <laughs> he said, don't do it. But this is important for me because I'm, I'm doing all of this research and I'm trying to figure out, will it fit my brand, will it not? Because like you, somebody has to really support and believe in my brand like I do. And I, when I first started my business, four months later, my original business will be three years old this year that I write content. And I have a partner. Four months after I was in, I dissolved the partnership because 
he wasn't as dedicated as I was. And that's fine for that. You have to recognize that if somebody's not supporting your vision, you're losing more money than gain by holding on. So I'm going to go a little bit on both topics because what I'm hearing is that you ladies are really, really dedicated to spend a lot of hours. So what does sacrifice really look like for you guys? I'm sure that word gets thrown around a lot. Like I heard that for you and Pamela in your, in your budgeting. I heard you see that child with your family and your time. And Red, you know, moving. So I, and, you know, I imagine you sacrificing as well by, you know, opening up these other businesses and time. So what does sacrifice look like for you guys? Um, for me, I do sacrifice a lot of time. Uh, between everything that I do, my phone is nonstop. Sometimes I'll get like a text, tweet, and phone call at the same time. Um, especially when something's going on at the label, like, so I'm always talking to somebody, so I, I sacrifice a lot of, I won't say mental health because I don't think that it's gotten to a point where I'm like exhausted yet, but it's a lot to process at one time, so that's something that, you know, you really just have to hold on to so you don't lose that. Um, I also sacrifice time because I work with the artist that travels, I work with other art artists that travel the whole country. So there's things that I miss with my family because I'm going somewhere on the weekend. Sometimes by tonight doing something during the week. Um, so yeah, um, I, I sacrifice a lot of time. Well, I can say that I sacrifice some of my self care sometimes. It's not good to say that, but um, because I'm always constantly caring for others, I'm always um, constantly pouring into others um, when they're in salon. So. Um, sometimes it's hard for me to take a back seat back because so many people want to tangibly touch you. You want to be like, oh, no, Red, I'm going to come to you. I want you. I want anyone else. So it's kind of like, where do you find the time? How do you duplicate yourself? How do you um, take the time to pour it back into your cup once you pour it so much to everyone else throughout the day? So I can relate to that. That's the reason why I get my sense of skincare <laughs> because. Um, <laughs> I have like a newborn, well, he's five months now. So I have three kids total. So, dealing with them, being a girlfriend, being online, having the motivation of like to pour into people. Yeah. When you pour into people so much, you be like, dang. And I don't, when I, when I pour, I don't post pictures. And I was looking at my face like, okay, I gotta do something. That's why I did that skincare thing. I'm like, I gotta just cleanse or something because you literally, start taking the back seat and not taking care of you, and then it become a problem. Other people don't know that when you're touching, you know, it's always like that. When I was in the hair salon, I just want to come in and get a sewing. Yeah. Oh my God, <laughs> like, really, you know, and you don't want to like, no, you're like a therapist. Yes, when you're in the hair industry, and you're a therapist, because they got all the problems in the world, you got cancer. So, it is hard, so self-care is so important. Like, day four, I had saw a clear face. I was looking real dead for a second. But, um, it's, it's a big sacrifice, but if you love doing it, you're going to do it, and you're going to make time for everything, and you know, try to clean up where you're not, you'll get it. Nobody is perfect. So, sacrifice. I made a lot of that. I'm thankful that I have a, an extremely supportive family and a very busy calendar, but I do, and I have learned how to mark time out for myself. And so I'm intentional about not doing anything on a weekend until 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock because that's my time. That's my self-care time. And when people think of self-care, I had to get out of thinking that me getting my hair done, my nails done was self-care when I had my cousin nicely let me know, you know that's basic hygiene. So I'm like, well, you know you got a valid point. So I had to learn how to fit in self-care with massages with making time for a therapist because you become so overwhelmed and you just almost start operating like a robot because it becomes so habitual for you that you are so busy taking care of everyone else that you kind of forget to make time for yourself. The other thing I've, I've always incorporated in my time is I date myself. I make it mandatory to date myself and that's my self-care and it's not a normal date night. I don't normally wear a lot of makeup but when I date myself, I do, because I feel like if I'm willing to dress up for my friends, if I'm willing to dress up for my man, I'm willing to dress up for myself. So I'm very intentional 
about making time for me because I'm making a lot of sacrifices for everyone else. Well, um, me personally, I have two children, 18 years apart. <laughs> so my daughter is 23 and my son is five. Yes. <laughs> hey, you find the right man, the right. That's right. Okay. <laughs> so it's definitely a balance of fathering time. It's to me, just like right now in my family, I cannot be born more than four days. So that's like the, the rule, because then by, by day three, my son's having a breakdown, I'm like, where are you? Four days, four hours. No, no, four days. I've worked up to four days. Just had to earn those four days. My son is five. I, I earned every last one of those days. And they'd be like, um, how should you call your name for the last three hours? You need to come home now. <laughs> and no one, no one ever cares about any of this stuff. And just taking it back, like, I've been working on my weight loss since I lost 10 pounds. Okay. You know, like, get, get my skin together. That's why I'm watching love. Get my early skin in the back. <laughs> so I'm like, wait a minute, where did these marks come from? And it's like one day you just look in the mirror and it's like, all right, who are you? Gotta start drinking water. They gotta do extra level squats. <laughs> but just, it's very important, I think, even just for mental health to just. Sometimes, like now, I do turn my phone for an hour. Because sometimes, when you're working on something, whether it be for someone else or even yourself, you pour so much into it and into your spirit, and you're not like you're not happy until it's done, and until it's on the level in which that you want, and you forget to eat. You start losing sleep. You start literally getting headaches. You start ignoring ignoring warning signs of your body. A lot of people are now dying from heart disease. No one's going to the doctor anymore because they're just grinding every day. So I definitely ask that question just to remind you know, everyone in attendance that it is important to still take time for yourself. And we are, as a people, dying too young. So um, something else that I want to ask the ladies all of you are actually in completely different sectors of your business. Some dabbling, a couple of you have been doing chats, maybe dabbling in some of the same things. But like, um, being the fact that you're in different areas, how did you really create that link for yourself? Was it something that happened for you overnight? Or was it something like, like red maybe was it something you just really good at? So everyone just wore that and came to you? <laughs> Or did you actually create a lane for yourself? Um, I didn't start off doing here. I started off with a little basketball scholarship in Cincinnati. <laughs> and I learned how to prepare for my teammates because we didn't have time to go here for us. And then I went to basketball and, you know, had a baby and we could make some money and started doing sewing, so putting on Craigslist and like, damn, I'm good at this. And then I went to school for it, couldn't leave, and I fell in love with it. And um, it kind of just took off from there. When I went to school, you know, when you know your passion, when you know something that you're good at, you have to just recognize it, like, okay, I'm good at it. And, you and know, a lot of people don't like to be like, they be timid, but I was good at it. So I knew I had an advantage, and I took it and ran with it, and did the unthinkable. I charged lower than everybody else to gain my clientele, and then once I was legit, 75, 275, like that quickly they stayed with me because they believed in me. They were like, oh, you're good, like, you know, nothing ever happens. So it kind of took off from the start, but I'm really just starting to see, like, what I wanted to see 10 years ago. Yeah. You know what I mean? So once I stopped doing hair, I turned it into digital products. So I turned everybody over to, you know, just like an open one okay? So it kind of went, but I'm just now starting to see what I want to see. So it didn't happen overnight. I'm only emphasizing that. No. Because in a microwave society, you don't need them. You think that it's going to happen overnight. I feel that it happened overnight, like it may be, you know, but no, it wasn't an overnight success at all. I don't think you probably messed up. Um, like I said earlier, um, this has been like an, an eight to ten year journey for me. It's uh, it's been very tough. It's been very difficult. Um, I've questioned it um, hundreds of times. I just, um, for me, I just didn't stop. Um, early on, I just felt like I could not be in North Carolina and work in the music industry. Like, I 
had to move out. So like probably with, like the first two to four years of me working in the industry was me just saying I have to get out of North Carolina and how can I do it. So with doing that, I was taking internships. Um, I had an internship with Nice Wonder and then I started um, interning with Fader Magazine and Cornerstone Agency. After that, I was just like, okay, what do I do next? And I started researching um, how could I have an educational background in music, and that's when I found NYU. Um, when I went up there, I was interning the whole time. I was in New York. Um, I was always at events. Um, I'm always at events now. And I think with me, like, my whole, like, come up has been visible because it's been on social media. So people kind of just see my growth from just being an intern to now I'm working for like one of the top artists in the music industry right now. Um, and I just never gave up. I never, I never doubted myself. I kind of doubted the journey, but I always knew that I could do it. So I was like, let's lock this two up. Like how, how are we gonna get this stuff out? So, um, and now it's kind of just like full circle because I'm back in North Carolina, but like I said, I'm working for somebody that's very high up in the music industry. And that's kind of just made me realize it doesn't really matter where you are. It, it doesn't matter the location. Like, if you have it inside you, if you have that determination, like, it doesn't matter where you are. You yes, your client is the reason why I can't find any children. <laughs> <laughs> no, they are salt. <laughs> Out. What's the one? Uh, she actually works with the baby. Oh, so you know? He always wears a turban, so that's his thing. Yeah, that makes him have a shirt for the turban. I think he's going to say those turbans. It's true. Take it off. Definitely bald. Hey, there's one to do. Got one. Well, what was the question again? Red eye over. So we don't need <laughs> How did you create a link for yourself? Uh, I keep harping on this word of mouth because word of mouth really helped me get to where I am. Um, I grew up in foster care from the age of 13 to 21, so I was always the girl who liked to make people feel beautiful about themselves. I was always the girl who wanted to do your hair, let's paint your nails, let's, you know, um, let's make yourself feel better. So I took that mindset and I turned it into a business. I turned it into a career, my passion. Um, I believe I created my lane by just really going after what I felt was mine and what I felt that I may have not had as a youth that I can have now as an adult. Um, I created my lane by being dedicated, coming in early, leaving late. Um, Saying when there weren't any customers in the salon at all, I was still there. I was still um, a face that you would see and be like, okay, I know at this time Ray is going to be there. So um, I believe the consistency um, helped me build my lane over these 10 years in ministry. Okay. All right. So we are at the portion where the audience gets to ask questions. Is there anyone who has any questions for the panelists up there?
before you get before you really really start seeing things because you're learning over that time. What happens a lot of times is people then fail at something and they'll either quit or stop for a moment. But when it's your passion and your fuel, with, you'll go back to it. But you'll go back better and wiser. The thing about it is you're learning from other people, like you're here, you're, at, you're able to ask questions and see how you can get out there. But the only way to know is to actually step. And as soon as you make that step, the world will get to know you the more steps that you take. If you are really living in your purpose, the world will know you. My father always said that if you want to do something in life, you'll either make it away or you'll make an excuse. I think another part of that is also not thinking that you have to be known for what you're doing to be something that the world needs. I mean, it could it could be one person that does a service and you have to go to Thailand and find that one person and then nobody might not know who they are, but to get this one service done, this is the person that you have to find to do it. So I think in everything that we could all tell you about how to make a name for yourself is also the mentality to know that even it doesn't, it doesn't like I said earlier, it doesn't matter where you are, as long as you're still willing. Because right now, I still consider myself a virgin, so I I don't think I'm that known outside of Charlotte. But I can't let that stop me from going out into Atlanta or LA or wherever I go to make those contacts. So you have to you have to walk and talk big, regardless of what level you're on. So that's just something to kind of put with whatever else you're doing to build your name. Whether you want to come. I would say, don't even worry about it. Just get out here, just do it, just do it, just do it, just do it. If you are passionate about it, just do it, it doesn't matter. And who knows you? Because um, sooner or later, somebody's going to say, hey, oh, she knows, I've heard about her. Or, you know, your network too. So also, if you can network, um, maybe even network an event, sometimes it's all about who you know. So, just sorry, just do it. Anybody else have any questions? Ladies, um, I'm Jay Mills. I'm from South Carolina, and I wanted to ask Megan, being that you're in the music industry from North Carolina, and you had to move. And you also said that you know now with social media and everything, it's not about like where you are. Do you feel like it's possible to build a musical hub within North Carolina and South Carolina? I do. I still think it's going to take some time, though. Um, just like we were just talking about how nothing happens overnight. Um, I always use the word ecosystem when I'm talking about the Charlotte um, music industry, and that's something that has to build over time. Um, it's also a psychological thing of how the, the city works together and how they view um, teamwork and how they view, like I said earlier, diversity and inclusion. I think it takes a lot. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's gonna happen still either, um, but you still have to get it working. So what I do see right now, I, I see creators all the time. I try and go out at least once or twice a week, and I see the people that are determined in North Carolina because they know they have the talent. They know they have talented people that can also work on the business side. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely possible. There's plenty of music creators um, in Charlotte and South Carolina. I'm going to be a little more <laughs> so, as a media personality. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to build more so as a personality. Like that's where I went to school for communication, bachelor's in arts, and my profession now is a makeup artist, but my passion is really music. And so, so even if you're trying to build North or South Carolina, you're definitely still gonna have to do um, to build out your network, and that's something that you're gonna have to bring back here um, to put back into these different spaces that aren't music based. Um, so it's gonna take some travel. Um, just really quick, I'm, a little bit. I'm not in the music industry, but I've only been in Charlotte for like a little over a year. And sometimes you got to leave your comfort zone. And I, I'm from Cleveland, and that's where I felt like I made my money. But I moved to Charlotte and made more without even doing the same thing I was doing. You know, I was in the salon for five years in Cleveland, and here I'm just in the house. You know, and doing better. So you have to leave your comfort zone because if you're around people, I don't see what you see, you'll be stuck forever. Like, even with working with people 
and trying to like get my podcast started and just yeah. people not be consistent and things like that. So I feel like I have to do everything on my own and I know I'm not the you best should. at like But you should. So the camera, get in front of it, press record, do it sometimes you have to do it that way before because sometimes somebody has to see it they have to see it already as a wish. It can't be a start it's for some people before they want to get involved. People want to jump on the train while it's moving. Yep. They don't want to get on when it started. It's yep. not just like as Pam was saying, sometimes they're not as passionate about it as you. So for me, I also like in all of this, I really wasn't working for the most part. Like I was doing like, you know, like retail work and stuff like that. So I didn't have a lot of money. But I did a lot of research. So in your case, it kind of will probably be similar to mine. So I was researching different conferences that I could go to, um, reaching out, seeing if they have like a student discount or any kind of discount. I don't have enough money for your ticket discount. Can you have a promo code that I can use? Um, so I would really say, I, I mean, everything that I've done has literally come from Google or social media. So um, like there's databases of like different summits and conventions that you can go to um, or just, you know, network and see if there's other like media agencies that sometimes they need freelancers to go with them and just like, I need one or two more people to help me cover. Just build your portfolio however you can. So this is like, I, I really did not have money throughout my whole journey. So it was something that I really just had to figure it out, um, but definitely start there. Um, um, conferences really help me out. Like, it's great to work conferences. And interning. Does it hurt to intern and volunteer? Can I try to find internships where you're not enrolled in school? It's easy to find them. I gotta be there. Well, then you can have a third after. Which can be easier. I want to um, just take a moment to bring Shanita up. She's the Glam girl in the corner. She's actually been applying lashes. We've got lashes for that. It's going to be for a couple of minutes. But I think you guys want to see that. You need to know. I have a question. Oh, I have a question. I have a question. Okay. Hi. My name is Shanita Gash. I'm a makeup artist and I also sell lashes back here. I sell 3D week lashes and 25 millimeter week lashes. I just started my own company in November. Um, last year. So I'm just going to do that. So I'm just trying to get my foot out there. I'm starting to build more my to with makeup. I'm jumping out of my comfort zone. Um, but yeah, that's that. I was not expecting you to put me on the spot. <laughs> um, my question is, do you guys feel like, social media is a big deal. Do you guys feel like being more personable on social media is good or better? Me, I'm more shy and timid. Um, I don't really want to put everything out there, but I find that most people do. And does that help business, or is it just how does it work? Should I or should I, should I learn to step out of my comfort zone, or should I just chill? Or how do you think? What do you think? Step out your comfort zone, but you don't have to put everything on social media. See me, I'm an influencer, lifestyle influencer now, and everybody that's through all my whole life. They are so intrigued on family, they intrigue kids, they anything that I do. But if you're doing lashes and that's all you want to do, just post lashes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to give them that size because you're just starting. I gave them that size because they want So I have to be consistent. Mm -hmm. And I stay consistent. Like, people will tell you, like, I don't see you know, you've been through here, 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 how, no, they don't see it at all. That's just who I am on Instagram. But if you're, if you're stepping out and you don't want to do that, you don't have to do that. If you want to just do straight lashes, Post about lashes and post like lash posts. Post things that about lashes, how to bring them in about lashes or facts about lashes, stuff like that. You don't have to put everything out there. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to. That's not a good part. Um, yeah, so I don't, I, I wouldn't say you don't have to put you know, really everything out there, but um, sort of kind of engage with your audience. You know, if people want to put your life out there, it's fine, but if someone's asking you a question, people like, to be able to touch you. I, I don't want to buy your products. If I, want, if I can't ask you a question about your products, you're going to answer that. So um, just kind of find that line. You know, where you're comfortable with that. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like most people just love a good old sad story. Like, you know, <laughs> a good old drama too much. Yeah. People like that. You get a lot of views when you have drama and stuff. It's me. I'm just like, you know, I don't look at it, but it's just not me personally. But yeah. I know. Starting the training is hard, but I appreciate all you guys' advice. Thank you so much. Thank you.
So now I tell people now, you have to mark your own worth. What is your worth? Because if somebody wants you and you have the content to show them that you can do the work, put a price out there. Or you can have an opportunity to negotiate. You can say, here's my price tag, but it's negotiable. But I stopped doing free service, and I'd rather deny free service because I had to learn that my worth, I'd rather not make anything than do something free all the time. And I did that for years before just deciding, I might want to just start my own business doing this because people continue to come to me. And one of two, a few things happened. They either stopped coming to me, and, and I was fine with that too, but I also had a lot of people coming to me from word of mouth because of the work that I had already done. So I made up the money that I thought I would lose, that I would, that I would lose by actually marketing myself for the price tag. So when I first started in the media industry, I was doing a, a lot of, I call it pro bono, I don't call it free. Okay. <laughs> and um, look at what, how it's going to benefit you. Because sometimes everything you can't charge for, because sometimes you want exposure. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes when you put yourself out there in exposure, you got to meet 10 people that's going to pay you, you know, just for one free thing. So I feel like if you're starting out, just ask them what they have to offer you. Why should you do it at a program or rate? You know what I'm saying? So that's that. When you start getting up there, and you know what I'm saying? When you start feeling like, okay, it's time to charge, you don't know inside. Like, no, I'm not doing it because I have my cost. Because somebody else is going to want to do it. But it's okay to do pro on work. You just, you know, you'll know inside. When you when you're first starting off, you want to get out there. You want to get out there. If you're doing media, you can do so much. There's so much going on in the Are you here yeah, I'm in Charlotte. Um, my basis is in Atlanta. Now, you know, I can charge now um, because I've built up my clientele. I've started celebrities and different things and different events, bigger events, BTL we got last year, different things like that. So, you know, I can make so I know how to fire now, but it was hard for me to figure out when I put that price tag and how much do I actually say because although I don't want the people that don't value my services enough to pay me, but you also don't want to push everyone away as well. Like, you know, who do I say it's okay to do for going to work for, and who is okay to let turn away, you know what I mean? Yeah, so you just gotta look at what they what they offer, what they have, and then also when I do something that's pro bono, I divide my time and how much I make in a day to go into this. Like, so it's like going for a weekend, how much am I gonna make this? Prior, like this weekend, I can make, if I can make $15 today, then I need to be getting paid to be away from $15. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that. For me, I think I just got to a point where I saw what I was doing prior was producing results for the people that I would, maybe they want me to listen to one of their songs or they want my opinion on like, what, well, what should I wear to this show or what should I, just all type of questions. And I realized, like even working with my artists, like just seeing what I've done with her, um, like I just got to a point where I didn't feel like I was just taking people's money. I got to where I felt like I could offer them something and that it was worthy at that point. Um, just with my background, my education, and seeing what I was doing with producing results. So I didn't feel that I was just taking people's money. I would say also maybe look at your competitors competitors charging for similar services and if you are um, at a point where you may not feel confident that you can confidently charge that maybe a median price because there's nothing wrong with the free pro bono if you're going to give me some type of benefit not just to benefit you but I got to be benefited too so there's nothing wrong with that Something back out of this is not a big guy, right? 
I should be able to get something back. I don't know if you guys know Frank Kern, but the question I take his coaching, and the question he asks us is this: What would you charge? What would you have to charge your client if your payment was dependent upon the results that you produced after the fact? Like if they had to pay you after you work, how much would you need to charge them to produce results that you can 100% guarantee? My number was $15,000. It sounds outrageous, but I know with $15,000, I can blow their minds. I can blow their minds. So now that I know that number, when you know your number, then you know what pond's sufficient. You won't even, right. you won't even be in the wrong pond. You'll be around the right people at the right time. And those people will have the exact price that you want. So I'll keep that in mind. Set that price in your head and stick to it. Everything I'm scared of. That's just <laughs> I just wanted to know, how did you know that you were successful? What was that, that waking point that you said? Well, I knew that I had reached a level of success when I kind of came to one of my family that people came to for advice and the community would come to for um, advice and um, any, any, anything that falls in my head. I also knew that I was personally successful and I was able to do what I wanted to do uh, day in and day out. So that's my answer. Um, I definitely still on that <laughs> on that journey. Um, but for me, like currently the position that I'm in right now, my kind of spot position is where I always wanted to be. So I definitely think this is a, I won't say a starting point because I've already started, but it's really all the way up here, but um, I do feel like I've worked really hard to get where I'm at, and I do think that's one part of my success. Yeah, success is not always money, so don't think that. Yeah. I knew it when I did 20 messages, 20 messages a day in emails, saying how motivational I am, how much, well, how could I mentor them, could I please start a mentorship program, that's when I knew I was, I was walking my purpose. I would call it walking my purpose. I have lots of success, so it's really hard. Like you, I don't equate it to money per se. I equate it to milestones. Uh, I knew I was successful when I graduated with my doctorate. I lost three pounds and cried for my life. Yeah, I, lost, I lost six pounds and cried for three weeks straight towards the end. That way, and I was exhausted when I finished. That was a major milestone. And even still, it was so traumatic for me, I'll be quite honest, it's still hard to believe right now because it was a really difficult period. So that, I felt like, was a milestone because I was the first in my family to do so. Yes. Uh, second, I, you know, I reached a plateau in the government service very young. I feel like that was a success. I wrote a book and published on my own. That was a success. It was, it's impactful in a way that I didn't think so, where people are already asking me to write a second book. To me, that equates to success. It's not whether I sold three books or 3,000 books, the fact that I have people asking me to write a second book, I consider that a success. So I'm not sure what the next, the next level of success will be for me. I know I am not in my comfort zone. <laughs> at all and stepping out into the world for the world to see me 100% raw and basically naked but with clothes on that's it. To me, I don't know what that next success is going to look like but I, I feel like you, I'm walking and living in my purpose so whatever that is going to be, I'm ready for it. Well, I'd like to thank all of you ladies for being here. <laughs> Thank you. We work for housing us this evening. And uh, mix single, drink some spirits in the side. It's your spirits, right? It's on, you know, as I gotta remind everyone, the lemonade has some alcohol in it, and the other one does not. I just want to make sure you want to do that, because I'm sure we're always going to fill it up. And I want to remind you home safe. I want to thank the ladies for taking the time out of your busy, hectic schedules to be here and volunteer your time. It means a lot.
the world to me. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank Marty for my real time meeting, for a good piece of everything together, and thank Shanita for taking the drive here. So we've got some music and uh, we're out.